Disney fires TV staff, massive layoffs as cable channels collapse. Disney is laying off their TV people because their cable channels are losing money. They got cut off from a cable company called Charter, discontinuing a number of their important channels because Charter says customers were just not watching those channels. When this happened about a year ago, it was clear this was a big change for Disney because if they don't have cable subscribers, they're not gonna have revenue coming in and they're not gonna be able to keep those employees that produce content for those channels. What Disney should have done, but didn't do, was cut back on those channels immediately and also have conversations with their other cable companies to say, look, we need to work with you on what we're gonna scale back because it was that company charter that said, I don't want Freeform. I don't want National Geographic. I don't want Disney Junior. What's going to happen to Disney if they don't coordinate with their cable distributors and agree to get rid of certain channels to all cable providers? They may have some providers that say, well, we don't want Freeform, but we also don't want this other channel. And we don't want that channel, but we will still take this channel. But unless Disney leads the process, all of their revenue and all of their cable operations are at risk. Coming from Deadline, Disney Entertainment Television lays off 140 people. National Geographic heavily impacted. And the basis for this is when Disney agreed to swap out cable channels that people weren't watching for access to Disney+. Plus. From Hollywood Reporter, Charter CFO says new Disney carriage deal means consumers no longer pay twice for content. Jessica Fisher said the industry should expect more streaming content to be included in the traditional cable bundle and less popular linear TV channels to be dropped. And this is going to happen. It's not like it's Bob Iger's fault at Disney. This is a major change in the cable industry. People are signing up for streaming and it's a much better deal for people than subscribing to cable channels. But what Disney is not doing is making deals and announcing deals in advance, talking about how they're going to restructure their relationships with cable companies. Which means by definition, whatever happens to Disney is going to be messy and inefficient and also completely unnecessary. They could just reach out and talk to the cable companies and make deals with them now before all the cable companies come up with their own plans and their own agendas. Layoffs are underway at Disney Entertainment Television. Roughly 140 people are affected, representing about 2% of the total Disney Entertainment workforce. 2% is not a giant number, but it is a significant number. It's the first of many layoffs to come. National Geographic is the hardest hit brand with about 60 layoffs or some 13% of its staff. Other significantly impacted divisions include the ABC-owned television stations Freeform, the operational side of the Disney Linear Entertainment Networks, unscripted, marketing and publicity, no teams are being eliminated. So they're just shrinking. They're just getting smaller, which is what's going on for all of Hollywood's entire cable industry. Not surprisingly, Disney's linear networks are taking the brunt of the staffing cuts, particularly those that do not provide the company's streaming platforms with highly popular originals, such as FX's Shogun or ABC's Grey's Anatomy that drive viewership and subscriptions. The layoffs have been planned for months as part of a streamlining strategy at Disney Entertainment Television, with department heads given targets to hit after a division-wide review. Almost half of the eliminated positions are in Burbank, California, where Disney Studios is located, and the larger Los Angeles area. The rest are largely in New York, as well as in Washington, D.C., where Nat Geo is headquartered. Today's staff reductions follow a range of other cuts at Disney, which have been working toward a stated goal of at least $7.5 billion in cost reductions since the start of last year. In May, Pixar Animation Studios let go about 175 people, or 14% of the staff, as the animation outfit trimmed its plans for a big expansion into Disney Plus series under Disney's new, more disciplined approach to streaming spending since Bob Iger returned as CEO in November 2022. Disney cut out making Pixar television shows for Disney+. And in doing so, they laid off a massive 14% of the staff. Right after they did that, they happened to have a huge success with Inside Out 2 because they're returning to making things that people actually want to see as opposed to their agenda-making stuff. Traditional media companies are going through tough times amid a soft ad market despite the influx of spending on political ads and live sports as pay TV continues to decline markedly and ad dollars are migrating to digital platforms. A couple of weeks ago, Fox Entertainment eliminated about 30 positions in a restructuring. There were also layoffs at Warner Brothers Discovery earlier this month. At a Wall Street investor conference in May, Iger was asked about the company's strategy in operating linear networks in an era of pay TV decline. 
He said the company is aggregating greater audience, meaning getting more viewers in general, while amortizing costs, meaning sharing the cost for one show because you show it on multiple platforms, that's one strength that Disney has that really is amazing. They can produce content and show it in multiple places, in multiple ways over multiple times. So their distribution for a new TV show or distribution for a movie is pretty much unmatched. They have the best distribution of anyone in the industry. That's good for Disney, but they've wasted a lot of that with their poor focus on producing things that people aren't actually interested in. Bob Iger continued. He said they were amortizing costs by running programming across multiple platforms and streaming, broadcast and cable. Well, we're doing that across the board. Disney Channel, ABC, National Geographic, and it's working, he said. Now we're going to continue to see erosion in terms of subs for those businesses, but we're going to actually continue to drive profitability because we're managing our costs so effectively. I don't believe they're managing their costs all that effectively. And it's almost impossible to trust Bob Iger, but he is correct that they have distribution for any entertainment content they make that nobody else actually has. They should focus on that and actually make things people want to see. They make a lot more money and their stock would improve. Disney's TV layoffs come on the heels of Disney recently netting 183 Emmy nominations for its shows, with some of the top awards performers originating on Linear, including FX's Fargo and Feud, Capote vs. The Swans, and ABC's Abbott Elementary. Speaking with Deadline on the day of the nominations, Dana Walden, co-chairman of Disney Entertainment who oversees Disney Entertainment Television, expressed commitment to Linear in the context of our ecosystem of platforms, how they're integrated, and how our linear strategy is embedded in our streaming strategy, while stressing that it starts with programming best-in-class content on our linear channels. Essentially saying, we're going to make great stuff, we're going to put it everywhere we can possibly put it, we're going to share the costs across all those places, and that's fine. It's like if you buy a new shirt, and you love your new shirt, it was very expensive, but you wear your new shirt pretty much wherever you go. Maybe it turns into a lucky shirt. That has nothing to do with it. What it has to do with is the more use you get out of something, the less cost for each time you use it. So if you spend $300 on a really cool shirt or $1,900 on a magical hat, that very expensive hat costs $1,900. And if you wear it once to go on a walk, then it's $1,900 to just wear it on a walk. But if you wear it on several walks, every time you go for a walk, it cuts the price because you've shared the cost across all of those walks. That's what amortization is. Dana Walden singled out such multi-platform overachievers such as Shogun and ABC's 911 and The Rookie. Can you imagine how well Disney would do if they would just literally focus not on pushing an agenda, but switch all of their focus to making great stories, whatever those stories were about, and then use their significant resources and distribution to push those great stories out to the biggest possible audiences? It would be a money machine. Once a leading brand of young adult programming with such hits as The Secret Life of the American Teenager and Pretty Little Liars, and more recently, The Fosters and Grownish Freeform, one of Disney's linear networks dropped by Spectrum, has pulled away from scripted series, which have been streaming on Hulu, in favor of more modestly priced unscripted fare. So they're making cheap unscripted content now because they don't have the same distribution they used to have. It's great when you can get cable companies to pay for all the cost of production of your scripted shows. And then you can just push them out on your streaming services and they essentially don't cost you anything. That's basically what Disney was doing. But cable companies have had it. They're refusing to accept that anymore, which is why Charter was able to force Disney to give it Disney Plus in exchange for dropping channels that people weren't watching. Meanwhile, this is the biggest reduction of employees at Nat Geo ever, which followed a close examination of the network and its affiliated business output. Like Freeform, Nat Geo has steered away from scripted over the past year with its nature-focused unscripted original streaming on Disney+. And you see how they leverage that distribution, pay for it through one channel and then offer it through another channel. Once it's already paid for, it's free to offer it on that other channel. Bob Iger gave Dana Walden tremendous credit for managing Disney's traditional networks by reducing pretty dramatically our investment in content specifically aimed at those traditional networks while at the same time investing in some and managing the traditional platform's networks and the streaming platform seamlessly. Last year, Disney eliminated 7,000 jobs over multiple rounds of layoffs that stretch from March to May as part of its cost-saving efforts. That led to the consolidation and elimination of a number of Disney entertainment divisions, including production operations across Disney TV studios, 
Hulu, Freeform, and FX being put under one executive. Freeform combining development and current and ABC doing the same with drama development and current. 20th Digital Studio and Disney TV Studios Creative Acquisitions Unit were dissolved. Investors have cheered Iger's cost-cutting push, but Disney shares have retreated significantly from their high mark for the year of $123 established in March. They have had some recent gains of their stock, but it's barely over $90. And Charter, the cable company that forced Disney to do a deal cutting out their cable channels, not all of them, but these significant channels that, that they didn't want to keep having to pay Disney for, because their cable customers weren't even watching these channels, they themselves lost 393,000 video subscribers in the second quarter. That's a 90-day period. So the industry is all but getting destroyed as streaming kind of takes over, forcing people who produce shows, forcing people who produce movies to actually think hard about what they're producing and whether or not the people they're producing it for will actually like it. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.